Well, folks, happy Friday. It's an, another Friday fishing forecast. We're coming into a weekend. It looks like the weekend is going to be absolutely beautiful, but the winds are going to be up just a little bit, both Saturday and Sunday. It looks like 10 to 15. Uh, it looks like it's going to be somewhat calm in the morning, but then the winds pick up in the afternoon like it has pretty much this whole entire week. So if you get out of the water, the morning will probably be better wind-wise than the afternoon, but it will allow you to get out on the water and do some fishing. I know the fishing's been pretty good. Uh, we had this front come through, so that might change things just a little bit, not too, too much. That It's not going to get too cold. So, um, you know, with that being said, like I said, the, the winds look like 10 to 15 out of the northwest this weekend. But the weather is going to be in the mid to high 70s, so it's going to be absolutely beautiful out there. So take the opportunity to get out on the water, enjoy it with your family, friends, and just go out and have a good time and try to catch some fish. Now, I just want to say that we do have uh, the boat show. We have two boat shows coming up. One in uh, on April 8th, 9th, and 10th at Armature Works, the News Channel 8 Outdoor Expo and Boat Show will be in Sunray Marine's booth, of course. And uh, so we'll have all our gear with us. If you have an opportunity, it's up at Armature Works. It's a great place. They have many different restaurants up there, tons of different bars, the river walks there. It's free admission. So if you get a chance, come up and see us that week weekend. It's April 8th, 9th, and 10th. Then we have the Sarasota Boat Show down at Marina Jacks. Uh, I think it's the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. We'll be down there again with Sunray Marine. We'll have our booth down there. So if you're in the Sarasota area, Come out and see us there. We'll be there. I, I don't quite know what the admission is to get in there, but if you get a chance, come and see us there at the Sarasota Boat Show, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to everybody for all of the support. Uh, we've been selling a ton of jigs, a ton of cast nets, pretty much everything. We've been selling everything, so we've been very, very busy here. I just want to say thank you for that. Now, Let's go ahead and get into the Friday fishing forecast and talk about what we have in store with the tides and salooners. All right, Here's, here are the tides and salooners for this weekend. On Saturday, we have a low tide at 4.03 a.m. at a negative 0.38 foot. Then we have a high tide at 8.32 p.m. at a 2.05 foot. Then on Sunday, we have a low tide at 5.11 a.m. at a negative 0.41 foot. Then we have a high tide at 10.13 p.m. at a 2.04 foot. Now, as you guys see, these tides are going to be relatively pretty slow this weekend. So you want to really concentrate, and I know I say this a lot, but it happens all the time mostly, is that you want to concentrate on fishing the salooner periods during these times, especially on these slow tides, because they're, those are going to be the prime feeding times that these fish are going to concentrate on. So it's, it is important, trust me. If I didn't think it was important, if I didn't think it work, I, I worked, I wouldn't talk about it. So it's, it's something very important. And also, when it comes to these tides, you know, people continuously ask us, well, you know, why is it so hard to catch fish on a moving tide, a stronger moving tide, than it is on a slack tide inside the bay? Now, it's completely different offshore, but inshore... When the tide is moving, and I'll show, I'm going to show you this video right here. When the tide is moving, you notice how these fish are hugging the bottom or moving along with the tide. They're, they're doing everything they can to either stay in one spot or they're just going with the tide and just going through and just drifting right through with the tide. They're, not, they're just using that, that moving water as an opportunity to just kind of glide through there or they're trying very hard to stay on the bottom and, and, and try to... Uh, stay there without having to move too much now when you see that that means that those fish are we have a hard time catching fish on a very strong moving tide you practically have to hit them in the head with a bait now on this video this is when the tide is slowed down quite a bit to where it's it's still moving but not much but as you can see in this one shot you can't see the chum dropper but the chum dropper actually hits just outside the camera range and you can see the fish rush over here, over there, and you can see there's a whole bunch of commotion. And all of a sudden, you see this one fish come across. It's a grunt, but he has a piece of cut bait in his mouth. And you see the other fish following, uh, following right behind him, trying to figure out what's going on. So, 
we always talk about those fish creating a ruckus down there when we're using cut bait or we drop the chum dropper. And that's exactly what happened. It, it, it's causing a ruckus down there. It's making other fish come in and investigate to see what's going on. You can see the snapper come in. You can see the red grouper come in. So utilizing tools to be able to get the chum down there, but like the chum dropper, and doing different things like that or, or on a slack tide, you're, you're, you're dropping chum down. So when that slack tide or that slow tide is happening, you see how those fish are up milling around in the water column instead of being right on the bottom. So that, that shows me, and in, in doing this and using that camera down on the bottom allows me to figure out what the, how these fish are acting and what they're reacting to. So this is a huge tool, and I'm going to start implementing it more. Uh, my carriage that I put my camera on to go down into the water column I didn't have it with me for the longest time, but I've got it now, so I'm going to start utilizing that. But this just goes to show you the difference between a moving tide and how the fish are reacting and a slow tide and how the fish react. So keep that in mind when you're fishing for grouper and snapper inside the bay. When you're fishing in shore for like snook, redfish, and trout, you always kind of want to have a um, you always want to kind of have a moving tide because those fish are practically lazy. They want the bait inshore they want that bait to come to them so they're they're in ambush point so you always want moving water when you're fishing for flats fish like snook redfish and trout but when you're fishing for grouper and snapper inside the bay you you want a very slow tide to to no tide at all now like i said it's different offshore when you're fishing offshore you do want moving water because offshore it just uh, what I've seen is I've used our eighth ounce slackers in 150 feet of water. Yes, it takes time to get it down there, but it just shows that you don't necessarily have to use a ton of heavy weights all the time. Now, when it's a strong tide offshore, you have to use a little bit more weight to get down. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the salooner times for this weekend. On Saturday, we have a major feeding time from 7:57 a.m. to 9:57 a.m. Then we have a minor feeding time from 1.40 p.m. to 2.40 p.m. Then on Sunday, we have a major feeding time from 8.56 a.m. to 10.56 a.m. Then we have a minor feeding time from 2.46 p.m. to 3.46 p.m. And again, like I stated, you want to make sure that you focus on the, the minor and major feeding times for this weekend, especially with those slower tides. So just keep that in mind if you're planning your trip. You, make, you want to make sure that you're in an area that's holding fish and you want to be able to get set up and ready on those major and minor feeding times with these slower tides. Okay, so those are the tides and salooners for this weekend and I, I, I want to preface preference that you want to really concentrate on the salooner periods uh, on these slower tides. So pay attention to that this weekend. Now. I just, again, want to say thank you to all the people that are sending in photos for the top catches of the week. I really appreciate it. It's, it's awesome seeing all these photos come in, and uh, it's, just, it's just amazing how many people are watching this YouTube channel and this show, and, and it, it, it just really, I just want to say thank you for that. So speaking of the top catches, let's go ahead and get into the top catches for this week. Here is Joshua Chavez with a nice mess of fish. He let us know that they were using our Stewie and Huggy jigs to get on a great bottom bite. They also utilized the Navionics relief shading to find new areas being that they were from South Carolina. On this next one, you talk about a football. Here is George Heron with a real nice tuna he caught on a flat line on a cigar minnow offshore of Clearwater. Michael Rankin claims the fish were hungry Saturday. On a number two hook, one shrimp, 15 pound test, he caught a two pound mangrove and a keeper gag on the same hook. So again, thank you very much for sending in your photos for the top catches. What are you doing, Rich? <laughs> he was laughing at me because I was messing up like big time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, again, we have the boat shows coming up, so come and see us there. Uh, also, we did a post online and we were talking about the uh, the phone cases. Now, if you go to sellhelmet.com, I'm going to put in a link down below, our, our referral link. You can save 20% off. 
with uh, the code TBFC. So if you go there, you don't necessarily have to use our logo. You can use anything that you want, pretty much. You can design the case any way you want. Now, this these cases are absolutely awesome. Uh, a cup, couple of my buddies have them. They absolutely love them. They do have a deal where if you were to break your phone using one of these cases, they'll either pay $300 to get it fixed or they'll replace your phone. So that's 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 standing behind your pro, your product. So you don't necessarily, like I said, you don't have to get the TBFC logo. You can get whatever you want on there. You just use our custom link and you'll save 20%. So with that all being said, again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.